Hello everybody, this is Tim. I just <coughs> sorry. I just recently got done watching a fucking piece of shit movie. And to beat it all, it's a Toby Hooper movie. <laughs> he's a director I don't think is good <laughs> at all. But he's in, well, I don't think he's good as far as like putting a story together and getting really good actors together. But he's in like an okay just point and shoot director, basically. But uh I just got not one I just got not watching the fucking Mangler based off a of Stephen King short story. Once again, I'm going to judge it separately from the short story, just by itself. This film sucks. It sucks it hard. I mean, this is a pretty bad fucking movie. <laughs> you get Ted Levine in the film. He played in Science of the Lambs as a, a serial killer in that film. Uh, I like Ted Levine. I enjoy the show Monk. He's on the show Monk, or he was, until the show got canceled. <clears throat> you get Robert England in here from Nightmare on Elm Street fame. Those are the only two actors I recognize. This film is filled with atrocious acting. No one in his acting, no one in this film is any good at acting besides Ted Levine and Robert England. And Robert Ling, and Robert England fucking hams it up so bad in this film that it just looks stupid. I mean, <laughs> I guess that's probably what Toby Hooper wanted him to do, but he fucking overdoes it so bad that it just becomes so silly and stupid. Uh, this movie's about a demon possessed laundry laundry press. <laughs> Which is on which in its own way can be entertaining. I mean, that's basically a B movie idea. <clears throat> so you can uh, you can make a fucking story like that entertaining. I mean, just have fun with it. Like you could have a larger press talk or whatever and everything. I mean, this is a B movie idea, and I think this film plays it way too seriously. For such a stupid idea, but uh, or such a silly idea. You can have more fun with this idea than what this film is doing. But uh, Robert England uh, plays a character named Gartley. He fucking uh, like basically runs the town. Him, he's the richest person in the town. He runs this big uh, giant laundry press uh, factory or whatever, and uh, he's finally got nothing but female workers in it, and uh, they all work in there. Uh, they all follow the laundry and shit, and you get this old lady at the beginning who drops her pills down in the laundry press and like reaches for them and gets her hand caught in it, and she gets fucking obliterated inside of it and ground up and folded like a sheet. Good gore. This film has good gore. It doesn't shy away from showing her get fucking crushed. <laughs> I'm gonna hand it the the film there. So yeah, you get good gore here. It's it looks really good. Special effects are fine. Um, after that, <clears throat> you got Ted Levine show up, and there's this character in the film called Pitcher Man. He's like an older guy who takes pictures and stuff, but he's obviously just a younger guy wearing old age makeup. And old age makeup is so like over the top and theatrically done. It looks a little silly. But um, he takes pictures and shit. Ted Levine is a, a detective who's his wife died in a car wreck that he was driving or whatever, so he blames himself. So he's not able to get over it and move on. He only has like basically one friend in town, and that's his brother-in-law, who's like this mystical guy who studies mystical stuff and shit like that. And <laughs> but uh, anyway, it's entertaining. This film is okay, okay, entertaining. The acting is so bad it kind of takes away from some of the entertainment. There's really nothing much to this film. It doesn't take advantage enough of the ideas of the, I mean, of the idea of the killer laundry press. Like I said, it's entertaining, but that entertainment only goes so far, and that wears off about halfway through the movie. You got Robert England. He's so over the top. All the old ladies like getting killed in the fucking laundry press. He's like walking out. He's walking on canes. He's got old age makeup on. He's like banging his canes and going hell's bells. And I'm like, what? You know, he goes hell's bells, but hell. And I'm like, what the fuck? Who wrote this shit? It's so cheesy and silly. No, he's not always supposed to be like a crank, a, a fucking cranky old man. But come on, you can do better than that. Um, the old bitch dies. Nobody gives a shit. <laughs> Except Ted Levine, apparently, and he keeps stuff. Uh, every time he thinks about it, he vomits, and he tells uh, his brother-in-law, a character named Mark, about it. The mystical guy. Um, uh, Mark keeps talking about it and talking about the mangler and shit like that. And, and then later on, you get another fucking accident at the same place where uh, there's people, at least people like moving an ice box or something, and uh, it hits the mangler or something like that, and electricity shoots out and it goes into the ice box. Like part of the demon's energy goes into the ice box. The demon in this film is like a, uh, a kind of energy who like exists in different objects and shit, more like a force of nature, really. Uh, but uh, part of the demon's energy goes into the ice box. Um, later on, Ted Levine is like, he's pissed off because there's been accidents over and over, well, two accidents at this place already. He goes and, uh, well, when the, the electricity hit the ice box, it fucking, uh, caused, uh, uh, one of the women there to get burnt, or two of them to get burnt, I believe it was two of them, and, uh, Ted Levine visits her in the hospital and talks to her about it. 
and he takes Mark with him, and Mark's, like, asking her about stuff, like, was there blood on the mangler or something like that, and shit like that. He already suspects, of course, he already suspects it's, it's a demon-possessed laundry machine. <laughs> anyway, and he's asking her shit about that, and then they and then they leave, and uh, on the way home, uh, fucking, there's a scene in the film at some point, I'm not sure if it's here. Well, well, I'm not sure if it's right here or a little bit later. This film... <laughs> Oh, this film is so stupid. You get a scene where their fucking icebox is possessed. And uh, the icebox that uh, some of the demons energy went into later is like murdered a kid and suffocated him inside of it. Which is pretty pretty hardcore for this film. But Ted Levine like fucking takes a sledgehammer and beats it to shit and knocks the top of it off. And like demon energy shoots out of it. And then the picture guy takes a picture of it and he's like, I didn't know you did magic tricks. And I'm like, what? You fucking thought this was a trick, and it's like so over the top. It's like a big fucking tornado of energy comes out of the top of it, and nobody seems to believe it or anything. And I'm like, what the fuck? Whatever, movie. Eat shit. But anyway, <laughs> I gotta have a little logic in a movie about a fucking killer laundry press. But, uh, you, uh, there's this woman there that, uh, works at Robert England's factory who's like some girl he brought in named Lynn Sue or something like that, and he got her off the street or something, and she gets one of her fingers took off by the laundry machine, and she starts. She gets a piece of the demon in her, because if you lose a part of yourself in the machine, you get part of the demon in you. Uh, and she fucking goes up there with Robert England, and she he like she goes in the bathroom and like take a bath or something, and she's like, "Well, don't you join me?" And like hitting on Robert England, he's supposed to be like a seventy year old man or something. I'm like, "What the fuck? Whatever." I don't get this character trait here. I guess she gets more horny or something because she's got the part of the demon in her or something. I guess I don't know. She likes that old man cock. But anyway, he fucking goes in there and he gives a line that I kind of like. He's like, the only thing worse than the devil within is the devil without. <laughs> but it's okay <laughs> for a silly film like this. Basically, you find out that Robert England has been like fucking sacrificing people he's related to who have turned the age of 16 into the, the laundry press. <laughs> that sounds so stupid. But he's been sacrificing people into it. So he can have wealth and a lot of money and shit and power, basically, and live longer. Um, and you find out later on in the film that everybody in the town, all the rich people are doing that, but they don't ever go into it. It's like a cult of people that sacrifices their family members to a laundry press, but they don't ever go into it at all. I mean, whatsoever. It's so underdeveloped and piss-poor writing. But anyway... Ted, you get a funny scene where Ted Levine's talking to Mark, and he's like, if you consider the idea that this laundry press might be haunted. And Ted Levine's like, he's looking at this book of, like, mystical stuff or something like that that Mark has, and he keeps pointing at it and goes, reality, bullshit, bullshit, reality, reality, bullshit, bullshit, reality. It's fucking funny. <laughs> and I enjoyed that. I like Ted Levine in the film. He's entertaining, and I like Ted Levine as an actor, period. And the guy that plays Mark, he's fine. Uh, I don't recognize him, but the actor does fine. In Robert England, he would be fine if his character wasn't written to be so cheesy and over the top and ridiculous. You get uh, scenes where fucking Ted Levine goes to the laundry press, and he's there. It fucking, like, grabs his coat and tries to pull him into it, and he turns around and shoots part of his coat off and falls out of it. And man, well manages to get loose, and he goes up there and fucking is talking to Robert England. Robert England uh, looks at him and says, We all have to make sacrifices. <laughs> uh, <laughs> major plot point here. <laughs> But, uh, I guess Ted Levine doesn't get what he's saying yet or something, and on his way out, uh, Robert England's character, like, owns everybody in the town, and the fucking, like, police chief calls Ted Levine and says, you're suspended or something like that, and he says, like, how much is he, how much, he's like, yes, sir, Mr. Gartley, sir, he's like, and then the fucking police chief is like, okay, consider yourself terminated, kiss that pension, goodbye, <laughs> but it's funny. But anyway, Ted Levine's like fucking hanging out and around, and there, uh, Robert England's niece has a niece in the film named Sherry. The character's name is Sherry, and he, she's all, she's turned to sixteen. She's gonna be the next sacrifice to the demonic laundry press, <laughs> the god of laundry, <laughs> but whatever. Uh, he's gonna sacrifice her to it, and uh, her acting, this actress's acting, is fucking atrocious. I mean, it is abysmal. I would, I would enjoy this movie. I love horror films. And B-movie horror films, like silly ideas about killing laundry machines and stuff like that, this movie could be a lot of fun, but they treat it so seriously. They treat the material, try to treat it seriously. It comes off so fucking stupid. <laughs> anyway, her acting is atrocious. They go, uh, Ted Levine and uh, the character Mark go to visit her, 
and uh, they're fucking. He asked her, is she a virgin? She has some acting, and she's like, just get out! And her fucking acting is so horrible where she runs them off. They leave, and I believe that's when you get the scene about the icebox. Yeah, I was confused a little bit about when it took place. I just remembered it being on the road. Uh, but yeah, that's when you got the scene with the icebox. But anyway, uh, the character Pitcher Man wants uh, Ted Levine's character to come down there, and he's got a present for him or something like that. Later on in the film, he's like got cancer or something. You get a really over-the-top scene. Well, <laughs> well, not over the top, but kind of more theatrical scene where he like fucking raises up, spits blood right on the camera. And I'm like, whoa, fucking 3D. <laughs> but anyway, uh, he's got cancer. And he croaks, but he has just enough time to tell Ted Levine that he's got a present for him. <laughs> he goes down in there with the character Mark and Ted Levine. And meanwhile, the picture man guys like got clippings and shit from like all the murders and disappearances in the entire town. Ted Levine's down there with Mark, and they get this scrapbook. It's uh, Mark Johnny, which is his character's name, and it's like his present. It's a scrapbook collection of like all the missing daughters or whatever, uh, the missing children from all the rich people in town, and where they've like sacrificed their kids to the god of laundry. <laughs> Um, and then you, Robert England has like a scene in the movie where he's showing that character Lin Su, who is now becoming more like Robert England. Uh, he's showing her like his contract he made with the, the God of Laundry. <laughs> I'm just gonna call it the God of Laundry. He calls it the Beast, but I call it God of Laundry. But, uh, <laughs> the devil possessed laundry machine. The God of Laundry. Um, uh, it just seems silly to think of the devil possessing a laundry machine, but <laughs> God of Laundry sounds even sillier, but. They probably should just call it the God of Laundry. The devil possessing it is a little bit too much of a cliche. Call it the God of Laundry. That's what they should have done. <laughs> but any anyway, um, he shows her like the fucking contract he has with the God of Laundry. Um, uh, it's like got his handprint on it, and blood on the back, and he says, "Now it's like time to make uh, your uh, fucking contract with it." Basically, and he takes her uh, blood and push pushes her hand on there and puts like a blood mark on her her hand where she had her finger ripped off or whatever or a bit off by the laundry press um and he's like welcome to the family <laughs> it's funny uh <laughs> you get a scene where the one of the guys who works there he's like the foreman i believe or something like that decides he's had enough of this shit and he wants to shut it down himself and he tries to shut it down and he gets his fucking arm trapped in it gets his arm ripped off and i guess he bleeds to death and dies because you don't even get to see him die so i just assume he dies off camera the character Sherry sees it, Robert England's niece, she heads back home. Robert England and the character Lin Su are going to head there and fucking kidnap her and sacrifice her to the god of laundry. Uh, Ted Levine's talking to her on the phone after he finds all the information out about all the sacrifices from the, by the rich people in town to keep them rich and keep the town looking pretty because I guess keeping a town looking good is <laughs> worth killing everybody in your family or something for it for the god of laundry, but whatever. Or so you can get a couple bucks, but anyway... <laughs> um, he's talking to her on the phone and she tells him she's like just turned 16 or whatever and they get ready to head over there Ted Levine and the character Mark does his brother-in-law they're heading over there and Robert England and Lin Su have already made it there they get her drug her uh, the fucking <sighs> and later on Ted Levine may, uh, makes his way well he figures out they're at the uh, fucking factory obviously he heads there with Mark he stops uh, Robert England and Lin Su from uh, putting her in, from letting her in the laundry, from from fucking killing her, sacrificing her to the god of laundry. The Ted Levine saves her. Uh, Mark gets in a fight with Lin Su, flips her over his shoulder, and she falls in the laundry press. She dies. Uh, Robert England is <laughs> fucking screaming about it, and then uh, he's like, "Oh, say la vie," <laughs> or whatever. It's funny the way he reacts to it. Like he doesn't even give a shit after he screams so much. And then Ted Levine fucking socks him in the face, and he flies on his hook and. Laundry press puts him back there and kills him and folds him up like a sheet. Pretty entertaining scene. Good gore here. It looks good. And uh, they got to perform an exorcism basically on the laundry laundry press. They're performing the exorcism, but uh, Ted Levine uh, fucking has some pills that belong to one of the victims. And apparently, if you bring something that belonged to a past victim with you and you have it during an exorcism, it fucks it up somehow. I don't get that. Whatever. Uh, so it gives the laundry press even more power. So the god of laundry grows legs and fucking gets up, starts chasing after him. This is what I enjoy, this part, because it is over-the-top silly like this film needs to be and should have been for more of the film. It takes itself too seriously for the first two acts. Uh, but when you get to the final, it's fun here. It's a little, it's a lot of, it's, I mean, well, it's not super fun, but it's decently fun here with the fucking laundry press chasing after him. Uh, they get cornered, Ted Levine and Sherry manage to get away, Mark gets his fucking 
her waist from waist down ripped off by the laundry press, who now has like red glowing CGI eyes. <laughs> It's an entertaining scene, decent, and get some decent gore there. So, uh, Ted Levine and her run away. She tries to sacrifice herself. The laundry press bites off one of her fingers, and then they make it down into a hole. The laundry press just explodes and falls down dead. I'm like, what? Or it just explodes and just falls down in the water into just little pieces. And I'm like, what? what? Kind of an anticlimactic final is that? You finally get some fun going here. Uh, I know some people might say that uh, it got her finger, so that got what it, uh, it's got part of itself and her now, so it's just gonna quit. But there's no guarantee that she's gonna fucking go along with this and become like Robert England's character. He doesn't know that, and even if it does, it's still a, a fucking shitty ass final because it's over in like ten seconds. Guess it's all they had to budget for. But if you can't do it right, don't do it at all. <laughs> what the fuck? So it just falls over dead, basically, or you think it's dead, and then the next day you got fucking. Uh, Ted Levine reading a note from Pitcher Man. They left him saying, "You gotta get your life together, get your shit together, and don't trust people with missing body parts." <laughs> and uh, he goes to bring some flowers to the Sherry character at the fucking laundry press, and now she's just like Robert England, and she looks so cheesy and so over the top and ridiculous, and it's fucking stupid. And she's walking with a crutch too now, I believe, or a cane or whatever, and it's fucking stupid looking. And she's trying to talk like Robert England was talking, and it just comes off so fucking cheesy. And there's the Mangler right back where it was. So the character of Ted Levine has accomplished absolutely nothing. <laughs> this whole film has just felt entirely useless. The character has accomplished nothing. Nothing. I don't mind downer endings in horror films if they're satisfactory and they make sense with the film. But you didn't need an ending like this. You didn't need it. And so Ted Levine just throws the flowers down, walks outside, gets in his vehicle, and leaves. I guess you're supposed to think, well, at least now he's moved on. He just leaves. But whatever, still, people are going to be sacrificed and murdered in the town forever as long as the laundry press is still there. So I'm like, okay, he just leaves? What kind of a <laughs> fucking worthless hero is that? If he actually gave a shit about people, wouldn't he stay there and try to stop more people from being sacrificed to this thing? But he just leaves? I'm like, what? But whatever. <laughs> fucking stupid. Ted Levine's acting and his character in the film is likable. He's fine. Robert England is so cheesy and over the top. It's like a a bad version of Freddy Krueger. But it's Robert England, so he's okay. I like Robert England. He can act, but he's so cheesy and over the top here because of the way the script is and the way Toby Hooper wanted him to play it. He gets such shitty lines like Hell's Bells, Fidel, or whatever. And, uh, he's only just he's only just decent. But him and Ted Levine and the character, the actor Mark are the only good actors in this film. Everybody else atrocious. They and they suck bad. The girl that plays Sherry, Robert England's niece, is fucking terrible but anyway <laughs> this is a film that should have been more fun and more silly and more over the top instead they chose to play it straight for most of the film trying to make it a serious more serious horror film and it just comes off so fucking stupid and like toby hooper don't you know a fucking silly fun b movie when you see one that should have been a silly fun b movie this is like the fucking recipe for a grindhouse movie about a killer demon possessed laundry machine not a serious horror adaptation but whatever <laughs> It finally gets fun at the end when the machine grows legs and chases them around, but it doesn't last long enough to get any satisfaction out of it. And at the end, it just feels like nothing was accomplished. So, who gives a fuck? This is one of those who gives a fuck movies. It's over. Nothing's accomplished. <laughs> who gives a fuck? It's over. The end. So, I gotta give it half a star for that. I like this film even less than Graveyard Shift. Because Graveyard Shift is a much more simple plot about just a killer bat rat. And that film still sucked. And this film right here had more potential to be a lot more fun because it's a killer killer laundry press. And plus you got Robin England and Ted Levine who are two really good actors. And you just underwrite this film so bad or write it the wrong way trying to be serious when you should just be fun and stupid. But anyway, this film is a bad joke and it sucks ass. So don't even bother watching it. I'd give it a half a star like I've said out of a possible four. It's dog shit. Uh, it's not as bad as uh, Next Generation or... Uh, well, yeah, it's not as bad as Next Generation, but it's still dog shit. So I'll see you guys again with another review.